Alleluia, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 118. <clears throat> we will read the psalm in your service bulletin, whole verse by whole verse responsibly, and the last verse altogether. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteousness. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord has exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. To them, I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. 
The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our second reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. A letter from Paul of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he have also appeared to me. <clears throat> For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though I was though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, 
she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have lain him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Suddenly, darkness fell on the earth. Birds were confused and went to their nests early. Nocturnal animals came out of hiding, disoriented, thinking that it was their time. The clockwork of the stars and moons showed themselves clearly, even though it was the middle of the day. People going about their daily life, farmers in fields, laborers at their work, it was as if the whole world had been placed on pause. As people stopped what they were doing and looked up and took notice of this remarkable celestial event. I am talking, of course, about an eclipse. I'm sure we all know that in just a few weeks on April 8th, the narrow band of a total eclipse will course its way through Indiana. And as the earth and the sun and moon all align, we will be plunged into shadow and darkness for a brief period of time. And soon many of us will gather to witness this incredible event, which also in a very small but significant way, may also mirror the greatest miracle of all time, which we have gathered to celebrate here this morning. Just as the moon passes in front of the sun, shrouding the world in darkness, we remember that darkness covered the land as Jesus hung on the cross. It was a moment of despair and anguish as light seemed to fade away from the world. But just as an eclipse reaches its peak and darkness recedes, we remember the glorious moment when Jesus emerges from the tomb, triumphant over death and sin. His resurrection brought light and hope to a world shrouded in darkness, just as the sun rays breaks through the darkness and dimness. Just as the clockwork of the sun and stars reveal the beauty and wonder of God's creation, the resurrection of Christ reveals the power and glory of God's love, a love that knows no bounds and even conquers death itself. For on that day 2,000 years ago, for just a few short moments, a few hours, darkness seemed to cover the earth, 
and everyone was filled with uncertainty and doubt until eventually the darkness passed and light returned to the world once again. We are gathered here today on this blessed Easter morning because even though at times it can seem like the darkness of the world is about to overwhelm us and cover the whole earth, we can celebrate because the darkness passes, the light of Christ returns, the love of God conquers all. We have gathered here this morning to rejoice because Christ has overcome the tomb and death. Jesus entered into the despair of death and passed through the tomb into the light of the resurrection. And Christ also invites us into this blessed journey with him because we inherit and are guided by his grace and we follow where he has already been. In many ways, we are living in the midst of uniquely challenging times. War between Israel and Palestine, Ukraine and Russia, dysfunctional politics during a hotly contested political year, the advancement of AI, the proliferation of disinformation, the list goes on and on, as we all know. And in many ways, the challenges we face in this world are unique and unlike anything we've seen before in history. But, and importantly, in other ways, the difficulties that face us today are no different from the ones previous generations have already faced and overcome. Because the future has always been filled with doubt and uncertainty. Old patterns and ways of life have always morphed and changed into something new, sometimes gradually and sometimes rapidly. But regardless of the changes and challenges facing us, whether they take place on the grand stage of world events or in the microcosm of our own personal lives, we are anchored and supported by something fixed and immovable, something woven into the very fabric of existence, something that lasts infinitely longer than the sun and moon will endure, the love of God, God's love for each of us, each and every single one of us. God's love for us is the firm foundation that will never change, that will never be eroded by the tides of time or by the events of our world or the events of our lives. It is said that the only thing that never changes is change. And that is true in every aspect of life, except for God's love. Because God's love for us is both immeasurable and immovable. Like an eclipse, events in our lives can seem to overshadow everything else. At times it can seem to block out all warmth and light, but that is not the end of the story. And we are here today because the light of Christ, the glory of his resurrection, cannot be contained or covered up by darkness forever. The light and love of God conquers even death and the grave and envelops the entire world. And we can't think of this as something that just happened one time 2,000 years ago, because Jesus is still coming into the world anew. God is still making us new creations. God's work is still being done in our lives, in our hearts, and transforming us and drawing us ever closer to God. God is still being resurrected. Christ is here and present. Jesus is in this room with us. And my hope and prayer for all of us is that we know that in our hearts and in our minds, that we are never alone in the midst of the darkness of our lives, of the world, or anything else. Whatever we have been through or whatever will be coming up as the years progress. Whatever it is that we have endured or are preparing ourselves for, we are here today and can celebrate because the tomb is empty and Christ has been resurrected from the dead. Nothing on earth, nothing in the heavens, nothing of our imaginations can overcome 
this remarkable and glorious mystery of God's everlasting and enduring love for us. We are never lost. We have no reason to fear because God is here and with us. I'm going off script, but I would be remiss not to comment on the child who was shouting yay as we were coming in. <laughs> because that's the whole point, right? Like, that's why we're here. We're here because we're all shouting yay, hallelujah. Celebrate, rejoice. Yeah, you got it. Amen, Amen hallelujah. <laughs> that's why we're here. Because we can rejoice. We have passed through the dry period of Lent, the trying times. And we finally can celebrate with the light of the resurrection. Alleluia, amen. We have nothing to fear, no matter what it is, because God is here and God is with us. Yay and amen. <laughs> <laughs> Standing as we are able Together, let us renew our baptismal covenant. <laughs> Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. He suffered on the cross of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, Repent and return to the Lord. I will God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We, to give him thanks and praise. we thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John, who was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection, from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the gift of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, 
be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Remember your baptism and give thanks to the Lord. Be ready to get wet. <laughs> Remember your baptism and give thanks to the Lord. I didn't forget you. <laughs> Remember your baptism and give thanks to the Lord. <laughs> Got you good, huh? <laughs> Prayers of the people, cherishing the reality of our salvation and rejoicing in the new life we have in the risen Christ, we shout, Alleluia, Amen. We lift our hands and our hearts to you this day, O God, and raise our voices in shouts of praise. May our joy overflow into the world you love, that all might know you and your mighty works. We praise you, almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. We bring before you the members and leaders of our church, the body of Christ, expanded in us your compassionate heart. Fix our gaze on your glory and focus on you and your mission. We praise you, almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. Let the whole world know of your goodness through the action of the leaders of the world. May all peoples live together in peace with equity and justice. May we be a blessing to this earth and its people by being examples of integrity and kindness, through truth and justice. We praise you, almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Shower all people with your healing grace. Bring them comfort and confidence in your presence. Bless the efforts of those who care for them. Receive into your presence those who will die today. Welcome them into your glorious eternal light. We praise you, Almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us share a sign of peace. 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 I know, right? That's great. Peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Good morning again and happy Easter. <laughs> I just have a, a couple of quick announcements before we continue on with our service. First, if this is your first time with us, welcome. If you've been here many times, welcome back. Either way, we're glad to have you all with us today. Just a word about communion. Um, please know that anybody who would like to receive communion, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, simply follow the ushers, they'll guide you towards the um, altar rails. You may sit and stand as you are comfortable. Place one hand in front of the other to receive the communion wafer. And you may either drink directly from the silver chalice or dip, or we call it in pink, dip the bread into the pottery chalice as your preference is. If for whatever reason you're uncomfortable or choose not to receive communion, please know you're still welcome to come forward and simply cross your arms in front of your chest like this to receive a blessing. But please note, this table does not belong to us, the church, but to Christ our Lord. 
for children who are in the audience, the congregation today, a couple announcements. Before you leave, please be sure to see Miss Jan Carney in the back over there. The Easter Bunny left some Easter eggs, and we have some Easter eggs for you all. And also for kids, just so you all know, the last Sunday of April is going to be our Youth Sunday service. So on the last Sunday of April, at the 10 o'clock service, we'll have all the kids who are going to help us with our readings, help serve at the altar. It's going to be really cool. So just FYI. That's it. Um, and I believe those are my only announcements for this morning. Aside from reminding everybody that I'm going to be out of town um, this week, so there will be no morning prayer or Bible study. And next week, um, on Sunday, Grace Wiles will be leading us in morning prayer. So thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death. By his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never cease to care for us and prepare the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, you revealed your glory giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Behold the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you, remain with you always. Amen. peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.